dysfunctional vet. We're revisiting this 14 foot log that I've been using to make the pads for the saddle rack, 18 saddle. And if I remember, I'll stick a link to the description. What I've done is I've cut roughly a one inch thick board and I ripped some of it down to four feet using the circular saw you saw just a moment ago and I ripped some down to 20 inches for the greenhouse. Let me show you the rack. All right, these are roughly one inch square and I'm not worried about the fact that they split. I put a little glue in there and as soon as I rip that one inch board that you saw in just a minute, I'm going to rip it into strips for this. Then the next thing I'll do is I'll take this and I'll set it inside the greenhouse and I'll actually assemble it inside the greenhouse just to make it easier to move. And I'll show you that in just a few moments. These are the boards that I ripped. They're about half inch. Some of them are a little bit longer than the others because I hadn't squared the end, which is not a big deal. We'll get to that. The way I did this is I put a sacrificial lamb right here because I was going to be cutting through in these boards I wanted to cut a whole bunch more on here. You can see my half inch lines, pencil lines. So I put this board on, I put this little piece inside the dog, and then I used the adjustable dog to clamp it into place. And I was able to cut all of these really well. Now these are my pieces, they're half inch, and I'm gonna now start assembling the, um, rack inside the greenhouse and as I say the reason for assembling it inside the greenhouse was just to make it physically easier to move it around. Now this is sweet gum and I'm not sure really how long it's going to last. I could slap some wood preservative on it but I'm too lazy to do that so I'm just going to slap it in there. Normally untreated sweet gum that is kind of laying out somewhere will last me like three to four years as a sacrificial lamb. Um, this board right here that you see that is pine. This one over here is sweet gum and this was the piece that I just cut off to get it down to close to um, 93 inches. The reason that I cut that off is it wouldn't be worth my time to have slabbed that into strips it's too short and eh, it just wasn't worth it. So now the next thing to do is to start assembling this and I'll show you that as I do it. Okay, this is my greenhouse right now before I put the thing in. I've got this rat bait in here because it's getting rats in here, believe it or not. I've got this trash can that I used to use when I would be uh, planting seeds. Here I have some seeds that I'm in the process of planting. Right here I have 18, or 36 total, but 18 different. Um, one is a summer squash and one is a winter squash. I'm getting ready to do some straight neck, I believe it is. But this is what it looks like before I get started. This plastic bucket used to have my mint in it. I'm getting ready to start more mint. Every year I lose my peppermint. I get these big beautiful plants and then they die. And I'll show you what I'm getting ready to do to try to help preserve that. <clears throat> For the record, every morning I put water on these and I've had really good success with germination. Now the seeds are out of the ground. I'm getting ready to cover them with a cloth and that will knock some of the sunlight off of them. But so far I've never had a problem with seeds coming up that were exposed to a little bit of light. Since I'm going to be threading these through, I've got them set up so I can thread them through the first two and then the last two. And then once I have five to six per um, bar, then I'll start screwing them in and assembling the structure. I'll show you that now. What I'll be doing is I'll be putting five through the bottom. We have five through the bottom. I'm putting two 
through the second set because I've got to bring the rest of them over here. But as you can see, I'll have five shelves on the bottom. I mean five supports. Another five, five. So I need to go get the rest of them. I'll be right back. I'm going to show you on these boards right here how I get them ready to uh, screw together. I'm not going to film all of this, but I'm going to pre-drill some holes so that I don't split this wood. And then I'll start moving the racks to where they need to be. And I will begin to actually assemble this by screwing the pieces into place. I pre-drill these holes to reduce the chance of splitting. Now I'll do that to each one of these as I assemble it. And as I say, I'm going to do this off camera so that I don't waste your time. Everybody's seen a hole drilled before. What I didn't film is I drilled two of these at a time. I'm now ready to start screwing them together. And this is how I do that. As you can see, this rack is very much to dimension. That's why I said it would just be easier to walk it in here in pieces and put it together rather than put it together out there. So now I'm going to screw these together. I'm using one inch dry board screws. They have a shelf life of about eight years when subjected to moisture. I don't think it's any longer than that. So I'll get all these pieces pulled in. I'll get this piece more or less straightened up and then we'll start putting it together. By the way, this is how I get water in here with this line. This pole is a little bit out of whack, which is fine. But that's how I get water in here. I'm going to pre-start the screws. And I forgot to use a ruler to mark where these go. So I'm going to stop the camera, I'm going to mark my stick, and then I'll come back and finish this. Alright, this is the partial assembly. I had to put this one into place to hold the frame. I'm getting ready to finish this second level and then I'm going to put in the lateral, uh, the diagonals to hold this thing in place so that it won't wobble. And then um, we'll start putting our plants on it. The rack is now assembled except for the top and I'll be doing that later. This extra extension on the end over here, I was planning to put some boxes, but I think I'm going to go ahead and just cut those off. Um, I'm not real thrilled with that. But anyway, here it is. I'm about to put the diagonals in. Let me tighten this just a little bit so it doesn't swivel. It still has a little bit of movement in it, not much. As soon as I put the diagonals in, it'll have no movement whatsoever. The rack is now complete. I have my side braces on. It's pretty solid. I've got two trays with um, 36 in one and roughly the same number in the other of seeds from tomatoes to squashes. I've got plenty of room for more trays. The temperature inside is 90 degrees. The door is open. Everything is good. And we're going to call this quits for this film of building the rack. Again, to recap, this is what was left over of the tree that I cut down in order to build the saddle rack supports for the saddle, the boards. The slats are half inch sweet gum. The supports are one by ones and they're cut fairly close. Now there's a little bit of warping. You can see that one right there pretty clearly how it's warped. 
but not a big deal. The screw will hold it. And if I get concerned about it, I can put a block underneath it. All in all, I'm pretty happy with it. The cost for this was my time and a little bit of gasoline and the screws. Yeah, the gasoline was cheap because I was, be I was able to cut so many at a time with my sawmill. The screws were left over from years ago. Life is good. Dysfunctional vet out.